I lit my freaking head on fire alone in my garage. That could have gone so bad. <laughs> The hats are here as heck, but they're going fast, fellas. I think I sold 40 of them in the first day, which is awesome. I don't even remember the last time I saw 40 of anything. What could be more than 40? Trick question, 60, the number of hats that are left. Look at the number of views this video has. You see him? Any one of those guys could have just bought your hat. Or they could be in the process of buying your hat right now, and they're getting up to go and get their mom's credit card. This is your chance to strike. Go ahead and go to the link in the description. Grab one of these heck hats. Be one of the first hundred people to own one of these clean mother heckers. Thank you guys so much for the support. Here's the build. It's pretty good, actually. Notice anything lighty and audio-y about this video? Your boy finally got actual video lighting, which I've never had in my life, and a lav mic. A lav mic! Oh. So you can hear me pretty much no matter where I go, no matter what I do. I could walk into the other room over here and I sound the exact same. So needless to say, the next episode of Alpha Mail is gonna be super, super fresh and clean. Remember to send any mail that you might want to to PO Box 8, Westmont, Illinois, 60559, United States of America. But today is a build. I've been taking Muay Thai for like, two months probably and a few weeks back I went and volunteered at one of the tournaments I DJed the tournament which was pretty fun but my coach had sent me a flyer for it like a, a few days beforehand and I was like Ooh. so that's what I want to be building today it's a, uh, a spooky man and his head is on fire now I've seen some like cosplay videos online of people who I, I don't even know they're like vaping inside there or something I don't know if it's like a little smoke machine in there that doesn't seem super safe or if they're just like continuously vaping for the whole entire day, which seems way safer. <laughs> um, but either way, there's this effect with like some bright lights where it like kind of looks like fire. And geez, I guess I definitely have the technology to be doing something like that. Sorry, Arduino guy. But unfortunately, I really want to light my head on actual fire. It has been one of my biggest dreams, but the problem is I don't have the time or the resources to commit to being an actual burn victim. So I have to make it in some sort of way that it'll be safe to light on fire for like maybe one or two minutes so you could like take some cool pictures or maybe if like a fighter wanted to do a walkout with a flaming skull mask that'd be pretty sweet i got a few ideas about how i'm gonna do it hopefully it turns out pretty good hope you guys enjoy the build hope it's a lot of fun oh i could use that for clickbait maybe thick cat clickbait hope you guys like it okay so first for the build we're going to need <laughs> I'm gonna try doing this one a little different than I've done other masks. I'm gonna make it so this thing's kind of leaning back. I'm gonna cut it kind of like here. Whew. All right, guys, we're almost done with the build. Just a few more steps. All right, now I didn't make the perfect cut. You can see there with the ears. It's honestly not even a good cut, but I got this big old block of clay right here. How do you open? Oh, let's open. Use a little piece of string to cut myself off a chunk. And right now is where I'm gonna compensate for my bad angle. So I'm gonna squish some more of it onto that side. And we should be all Gucci. I just wanna... Okay, that's pretty level. And now we can have a moment of honesty here, I think. Buddy, I've known you for a long, long time, and I don't want you to take this personal, but you got a little old head. Your head is so, so small. Like, honestly, I have small pock, and I got a bigger head than you. But it's okay, because whenever there's a part of my own body that I wish was different, I just put a big old piece of clay on it, and I shape it, and no one really even notices, or at least nobody said anything to me. So we're just going to fix up those cheek muscles. Need some big old cheeks. Need a big old cheek right here. And kind of give you a bigger uh, face. Just make your face a little bit bigger. Make your nose just kind of a little fatter. And then we'll give you a big boy head, just like your dear old dad. Now the shape here isn't the most important thing on earth because I'm actually putting a Halloween mask over this and we're gonna be using the Halloween mask as the actual mold or the form, I guess you would say. But all this is just to make sure that uh, once I put the plaster over the Halloween mask, the weight of the plaster doesn't like sort of compress the mask and make it so small that I can't actually put the mask on. Come on, buddy, you can do it. Ah. Come on, buddy, you can still do it. <laughs> right? <laughs> Look, he's got one of those little soft spots on his head like a little baby. You can even do that thing you do to babies where you just kind of kind of go like that, you know? <laughs> Look, you can even fix it kind of like you fix the baby where you stick the piece of clay in its eye socket. Jam it up there. <laughs> what a cute baby. I'm going to fill up the eye sockets with clay so that the plaster doesn't pour into it. All right, that's pretty good shape, I think. That was uh, definitely a little bit easier than sculpting. Just a little bit. Now we pray the clay away. 
Now we're going to mix up and apply all this plaster to uh, the, the, the mask. Paying very special attention to get inside all the little nooks and grannies and the crevasses. <coughs> oh, I'm definitely getting some. Alright, this should be pretty simple. I'm gonna mix up this plaster and I'm gonna wait for it to get a little bit firm so that it'll actually stick to the surface of the mask. And I'm not gonna lay it on way too thick because I am gonna have to break the mold to get the fiberglass out of it. Unfortunately, I can't reuse this mold because there's so many concave parts in it that the fiberglass is really just gonna be like locked inside there. The only way to get it out is to break it. So let's do it. How you like this microphone? This one's pretty good, huh? It's a little less bassy than the shotgun mic, but I think that's a little bit more appropriate for what we're doing here. <clears throat> okay, now I'm gonna try really, really carefully to remove this from its mold without breaking the mold, obviously. Definitely easier said than done. That head might be bigger than the opening here, so I might even have to cut the head out of there. Hope not. Okay, the mask is separating really well from the plaster, but now obviously the hard part is getting the styrofoam head out of there. You know? If I got some acetone, I could just melt it out of there. If this works, this is going into Life Hacks 2019 for sure. Well, if I can figure out a way to work a hot glue gun into this. Here we go. Heck yeah, look at that. Oh, heck yeah. Dude, I was about to spend 45 minutes chipping away at all this stuff, pulling out little pieces. That's the bomb, dude. Dude, this works so freaking good. Oh my gosh. This is officially the new way to do this. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. And I can just like stash this somewhere in case I need it for another mold. I'm gonna have to get used to the fact that I can just like walk around anywhere and keep on talking. Like right now I'm halfway across the garage and it probably sounds like I'm right next to the camera. All right, what we got here is a nice tasty mixture of equal parts Bondo body filler and fiberglass resin. We're gonna mix these two up. Now you can take a pretty decent amount of time making sure this stuff gets really, really nice and mixed up because it's not gonna start hardening until you add the cream hardener and the fiberglass resin catalyst. But once you add those two, then the party's on. So you gotta start moving pretty quick. So I'm gonna get this thing ready. I'm gonna add Eh, about that much. Not being real precise here. Good little amount of the cream hardener. Mix it up really, really good. And this is already starting to thicken up. So I'm gonna pour the whole entire thing into here. Then I'm going to roll it around. Make sure I get a really good even coverage all on the inside of this. Gotta really make sure to get those teeth. Pour the excess out. When you got a big fat Polish face like mine, you need as much space as you can afford. Come on, little doggy. Papa needs some cheek room. Man, that sucks. That's probably like 10 bucks worth of stuff right there. <laughs> Well, hopefully this video makes me more than 10 bucks. Okay, there we go. You see it's starting to sort of chunk up right there. All right, now here's something that's definitely not completely necessary. But very helpful if you can pull it off. No matter what, the fiberglass resin that we're going to be uh, putting the fiberglass mat into there with is definitely going to bond to this pink layer. So you don't have to be like rushing super fast to try to get the fiberglass in there. But if you can get the fiberglass in there while this stuff is still semi-wet, then it'll be really convenient because it'll kind of stick in there so you don't have to be like holding it down while you're painting the stuff onto it. It'll just kind of stick. If you're trying to decide if you should go with the fiberglass cloth or the fiber fiberglass mat, definitely go with the fiberglass mat because it doesn't have a weave. It's just all random like that. So you uh, can really just push it into any sort of shape. It's a lot easier than trying to get the uh, fiberglass fabric to form to this shape. You're pretty much never going to be able to do that. So that's what it looks like right now. I'm gonna pour up some more resin. I don't have to put the Bondo into this. The reason why we added the Bondo in the beginning is because the texture of the Bondo is a lot more for forming into all of the little tiny nooks and crannies and stuff, but it's not liquidy enough on its own and that's why we mix it with the fiberglass resin. But here we're just doing actual fiberglassing so we don't need any of the Bondo in there. Man, I've, it's been so long since I've done this. I really forgot how much I hate this. I mean, I don't hate it. There's just, there's a lot of anxiety with like, this has got to go on my freaking face in a minute. Like better not have any needles pointing towards my eyeballs and all that. So you just try and try your hardest to get it as flat as possible, but you're never going to get it completely flat. It's just nerve wracking. You just do your best. All right, I've destroyed my table getting this far. Pretty even coverage all the way around. I'm going to let this cook overnight and see where we're at in the morning. All right, it's the next day. It should be dry. Oh, it looks kind of 
gross though. It looks like a big spooky spider's nest or something. This looks like a bunch of hair. Ugh, I can't even think of what could make that look a little bit spooky. All right, let's bring this outside and I gotta break the plaster mold off. We're gonna pray there's no bubbles or uh, really just nothing wrong in general. Dear God, no bubbles. Amen. It's gonna be a bit of work trying to get all the little pieces of plaster out from all the little crevices, but it's separating pretty good. And I think I'll probably be able to get this cleaned up in like an hour. I was just mostly afraid somehow the mask was gonna crack, but it turned out pretty sick. I'm gonna use this oscillator to uh, cut away the edges now. Always, always make sure if you're cutting uh, fiberglass with power tools, or really just at all, if you're handling it all, make sure you got gloves and you got long sleeves and breathing protection. You definitely don't wanna be breathing the stuff in. So I'm going in. Test, test. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna drill these eyes out first so that I can actually see what it looks like when I try it on. <laughs> that moment when the calcium kicks in. Pretty good. Now I'm gonna do all the final cleaning with these steel wire brushes. I'm just gonna run it under the hose and scrub away until all the plaster's gone. All right, so I got the majority of the plaster off. I could sit here for like the next five hours and try to get every single little tiny bit of it, or I cannot do that. But you can see here, as I was scrubbing, some voids made themselves known. Easiest fix ever, we got a whole entire half a can of Bondo. That's what this stuff is made for. So just mix some of it up by itself, fill up the voids, sand it down after it's hardened, and we're good to go. Give me right now, while this is drying, I'm gonna go to the hardware store. I'm gonna buy some high heat resistance engine enamel instead of just regular spray paint that I typically use. It's a really nice thick spray paint, so it's gonna kind of smooth this out a little bit, but not way too much. Uh, but most importantly, it's gonna hold up under the heat a lot better than just regular spray paint is going to. You're still not gonna be able to like expose it to direct flame, but from the beginning, that wasn't the plan with this, so that's not a problem. So I'm gonna go off and grab that. I actually found something else that's actually a little bit better than the stuff that I was gonna get. I was gonna get this 500 degree engine enamel, but this stuff is good up to 1200 degrees. So I'm gonna do a black primer layer first. It's looking pretty good, I think. All right, now we're putting the foam inside the mask. There's actually gonna be like barely any in there because this isn't supposed to be an active mask. Like this isn't something that I'd be wearing while I'm like chopping pumpkins and stuff. This is strictly for costume. So we just got this one inch thick sheet of foam. Cut out a little chunk like that, trim it down. 
We got a little sticky back Velcro strap. Use it to stick that in there. And this way, when the foam gets dirty, you can just peel it out and replace that piece. It's not a big commitment like gluing a piece of foam in there like I used to do. And this is just a little elastic band. As far as the straps and the foam and stuff go, that's actually it. This is a wearable mask already. Now I gotta figure out all the fire stuff, but it's a pretty sweet mask. Can you believe that, guys? We made a sick Halloween mask out of just some plaster and some fiberglass and a Halloween mask. Okay, we're on the uh, second to last part of the build. We're gonna be making a headband that is actually the part that's getting lit on fire. For this, you have to be 100% positive that you're using 100% cotton. If you use any sort of synthetic blend, like some polyester or some nylon or something like that, once the lighter fluid burns up, then it's actually gonna catch the material on fire and start melting it. And you definitely don't want that dripping into your eye holes or down your neck and all that. So make sure you go with cotton. It just gets kind of crispy after it's been burnt. It's not gonna melt. I'm gonna see if I can rip strips off of this. Sweet, that's perfect. I'm going to take three strips that are about six inches wide, and I braided the three of those together. It doesn't look that much like the one in the picture, but I'm, I am gonna light this thing on fire, so I don't wanna like spend way too much time on it. Now here's the hard part. Apparently titanium has a really low thermal conductivity, so that means it's a pretty good heat shield. Thank you, titanium guy who sent me this stuff. Alpha male, hit me up. But so far from what everybody's been telling me, they're saying I'm gonna have a heck of a time grinding this stuff. They said it's gonna take forever, and I'm gonna go through a million cutoff wheels. So just as a test, I cut off the corner that's over there. And let me tell you, it's going to take forever and I'm going to go through a lot of cutoff wheels. But you got to do what you got to do to protect the old dome. So let's get to work. I got a real pretty light show because this is gonna take for freaking ever dude like that feels almost smooth oh wow it's really not even hot it's gonna be a really good heat shield yeah that oh man this is gonna take forever <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna clean up the edges. Let's see if we can bend this. All right. Ooh, that feels creepy. That feels like it's gonna snap. Hold on. Uh, I'm gonna get some gloves and a face mask. That's just not bending much as the thing. It's really springy, or it's bending too much in that one spot. I need it to kind of go around the whole entire, yeah, that's good enough for that spot. Do I gotta put it in the vise? Little by little. It seems like it's working. Making progress. The fact that it's super hard to bend is actually really coming in handy because you can see the bend is becoming really gradual, whereas if I was doing this with steel, you'd be seeing all the individual crimps. Let's just turn it out. Pretty dang good. Now I'm gonna drill the holes. I keep it lubed up with some WD-40. And we're using cobalt drill bits. Sweet. Wow, I thought that was gonna be like an issue. I do only have two of these bits though, so we'll see what's up. I'm gonna drill holes here and here, and then there's another four on both sides. So I can pop some rivets through there, and that'll kind of hold the cotton in the center so it doesn't just like slip down and go into your eyes while it's on fire. That wouldn't be ideal. No freaking way, dude. All those holes with one bit, huh? The titanium thought it was so big and bad. Never met a guy like Cobalt, though, huh? In case you're wondering, these are steel rivets. So they're gonna be able to hold up to the heat pretty good. I'm gonna shape these a little bit. They look kind of a, uh, kind of uncircumcised penis-y, if you know what I'm saying. Sweet, it'll definitely keep it in place. Can you hear the, the tiredness in my voice? Man, when you try to do something nice for yourself and go to bed at 10 p.m. every night and you accidentally turn yourself into an old man, whew. Easy work, easy work, we got this. Ain't nothing gonna stop me. I'm uploading tonight, baby. <sighs> You're almost there, Eli. Just a few more hours. Whew. 
There we go. Is that it? Did I do it? All right, I tied the headband off around the back. <laughs> this may be the last time you guys see me looking how I look right now. Bye bye, face, maybe. Understandably, I was pretty timid with the lighter fluid, but now that I know it really doesn't get that hot, go big or go home, I guess. Man, I hope I got the shot there. Oh, snap. Oh no, it burned my hairline, oh no, it was already like that. I didn't like rip it off because it was getting hot. It was honestly pretty cool the whole entire time. But I was like, it's funny because it was going so well that I was like, something's gotta be wrong. <laughs> like there's no way that this is actually working. Like my, man, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like so high on adrenaline right now. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Man, but I hope I got the shot. I think I, I think I saw a few frames in there that looked really, really good. Uh, needless to say, guys, um, I know I like just taught you how to make the whole entire thing, but I wouldn't really, <laughs> I wouldn't really suggest making this at home. Well, the mask. Don't light your head on fire, though. This honestly was like pretty dumb. Something could have gone wrong. Thankfully, nothing went wrong. It did go really well. Could have been bad, though. Um, definitely could have been not great. Well, these are the lengths that I go to to entertain you guys, keep things fresh. I lit my freaking head on fire alone in my garage. That could have gone so bad. <laughs> Oh, don't do that guys. Don't do that. I'm probably gonna be keeping stuff a little bit safer from now on But if you really enjoyed the video guys, I just need you to know I can't support myself on AdSense anymore I thought it was gonna be better for a while, but it just vanishes as soon as it comes So if you guys could get even just like spare a dollar on patreon or something that would be that would be so amazing I lit my head on fire. Oh, man. I'm still like but can you hear my voice shaking? I lit my head on fire. <laughs> yeah, that's about all I got for today. I don't know if I'll be able to sleep tonight. That was uh, that was a lot to handle, a lot to process. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll, I'll uh, talk to you later. Bye.